The very last trip of open access fishing was probably some of the worst weather across the Gulf that we'd ever seen during a halibut opening for years. Uh, we loaded the boat, we had fish on deck, and we took too much fish. And the boat wasn't really that as stable as I liked it. The boat didn't sink, everybody was fine, but I was biting my nails. We ended up calling our halibut fishing openings derbies. They were intense, they were ugly. Your priority was just to catch fish. You pushed the limit of safety as much as you could. Just about everybody I know had a situation where they pushed it further than it was comfortable. Over the years, fishermen have harvested vast quantities of fish as if the supply were unlimited. Today, fish stocks have plummeted. The collapse of fisheries worldwide is a real possibility. The effects would be devastating. Two billion people rely on fish as their main source of protein. The entire marine ecosystem would be put at risk. Fisheries are a common pool. Without any control or ownership aspect, the only way to own a fish in this case is that you have to harvest it, take it, and put it on the deck because that's your only ownership as opposed to, say, a farmer who owns his land. Fishermen have an incentive to get as much as they can as fast as they can. So in order to increase their ability to catch fish, they'll invest in new gear, bigger gear, bigger boats, bigger engines, you know, all sorts of things so that they can catch more every single year. Consider the conservation aspects of that. Even though I might be one who would like to leave some of those fish in the sea and, that, and let them grow and reproduce next year and the years to follow to make it sustainable, I cannot do that and be comfortable because I know that those fish left will most likely be caught by somebody else. So they had to figure out how they could not overfish the resource. In recent years, there's been an approach that has emerged. They're called catch shares, individual transferable quotas, or individual fishing quotas. They're a share of that sustainable amount that scientists determine every year to catch. They're just like a slice of the pie, if you will. This fisherman gets X percent, this gets Y percent, this gets Z percent, and so on. Everybody has a fixed amount of fish they can catch over a whole season. Each fisherman knows exactly, before the season starts, how much fish he or she can catch. What happens to them now? There's not that competitive aspect there was under the old uh, regime where rate, you know, fishermen were trying to catch fish before others, the so-called race for fish. You can live a civilized, sane life uh, as a fisherman, which we couldn't do under open access. It was crazy. Now he could say, I'm not going fishing. It's just too dangerous, and that, as opposed to the uh, old compressed season format where it was in 24 hours, that's all you had to fish for the season. Even if it was a perfect storm, you had to fish. When you've been in a nightmare situation and you realize you've gotten yourself into in open access fishing and you don't have to do that anymore, that is the most important thing. Fishermen can now choose the best times to catch halibut. They didn't catch these large, massive quantities of, of fish all in one setting. They could take their time. They could take and better care for the ca uh, catch. With IFQ, suddenly we had a whole different set of priorities. You're getting the highest quality. Um, you didn't want to just cram every fish you could into your boat. You wanted to take care of every fish with kid gloves and have it get top dollar at the dock. Now they're getting revenues, higher revenues, on the base of the quality of fish that they catch. The price of black cod doubled immediately on the passage of IFQs. It was a seller's market now. It wasn't a buyer's market. We had all the market leverage. It was our fish. The buyers had to, had to bid for it. They couldn't just lowball us like they had before. Fishermen make more money, period. If you consider the st a stock of fish in the sea as a savings account in that we would like to take uh, that savings account's interest every year in that. And really, let's protect the principle, the stock of fish. Make sure that what we take is purely interest and we don't deplete the principle that we have in there, the stock. The catch limit should equal your interest. And if you just catch that much every year, then you'll be able to have a healthy, sustainable, productive fishery long into the future. 
No longer are these boom and bust cycles of catch. We're seeing evidence that the catch stabilizes over time under ITQs. The incentives of the fishermen to conserve the resource, to avoid bycatch, to maintain habitat, not to overfish, are all built in to the IFQ system. If you want to do it, it's your future. One great example is the Gulf of Mexico red snapper fishery. It's been under a catch share for the past three years. And just last year, they were actually able to raise the catch limit because the biomass has, been able, has increased substantially. And as a consequence, you see catch share and the value of these catch shares going up over time. The trading aspect is an interesting component of these uh, catch shares. Now I have a valuable asset, this quota share that can be sold or if I can't fish this season, I could lease it out and still get income from it. A growing number of fisheries around the world, say 5 to 10 percent of the world catch, now are coming under these so-called catch shares or individual transferable quotas. There are actually 275 catch share programs worldwide. There's about 24 catch share programs in the United States alone. About 50% of the value of our U.S. fisheries are, will be under catch share starting on January 1, 2011. There are many things impacting fish stocks today. Catch shares aren't going to solve every single problem in the ocean or every single problem with fisheries. However, they are the best method we've found so far to make sure that fisheries are sustainable and that fishermen can have productive and profitable jobs. A key player in the expansion of catch shares is PERC, the Property and Environment Research Center based in Bozeman, Montana. Good afternoon, PERC. This is Genevieve. PERC's research director, Don Leal, has spent 20 years looking for solutions to the decline in ocean fish stocks and shrinking incomes for fishermen. He found that property rights, ownership in the fishery, can be an answer. Catch shares are just one application of free market environmentalism. Property rights are a powerful incentive that encourage better stewardship for our natural resources, and they can be applied in other situations where regulations have failed. We do research on fisheries. We do research on water. We do research on land. We take that research from bookshelves to people who can actually put it to work, policy makers, journalists, and we work with practitioners, landowners, water owners, environmentalists, who are looking for ways to improve the environment using property rights and markets.